Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steve Schneider. I'm general manager here at St. Paul Regional Water Services, and I'd like to give a warm welcome today to the administrator of the EPA, the Honorable Gina McCarthy, and I'll Mayor Chris Coleman of the City of St. Paul, the MPCA Commissioner, John Linkstein, Met Council Chair Adam Dunnick and members of St. Paul Board of Water Commissioners and all other state and local officials and AGC representatives. We are honored to host you here at our facility. We at St. Paul know how fortunate we are to have the clean quality source water available for us to do what it is that we do. From our Mississippi River where we get more than 80% of our drinking water to the chain of lakes that the water filters through, it's essential to our business to have a clean water supply. We all benefit from the Clean Water Act that keeps our lakes, rivers, and streams viable and our source waters well protected. We appreciate the work that everybody at the EPA does to ensure our surface waters provide us with an excellent source of produce, or for producing quality drinking water. The clean water source allows us to attain efficiencies here in St. Paul um, in the production of drinking water that has been recognized by achieving the EPA-sponsored President's Award for the Partnership for Safe Water. We are only 31, there are only 31 treatment plants that reach the phase four level, and we recently have done so. It's amazing, it's the amazing work of the 250 men and women who are dedicated to drinking water in St. Paul, and we serve more than 415,000 customers every day. While our staff does tremendous work, there are many challenges facing water systems across the country, including ours. One of the major challenges is the aging infrastructure that our water system um, is, is under. I would like to thank the Board of Water Commissioners for having the foresight to begin addressing those issues now rather than pass that burden on to future generations. And also I would like to express our appreciation to the EPA for making drinking water revolving loan funds available for us to finance that real important work. So our efforts to provide quality drinking water will continue well into the future, just as they have for the past 130 years. So now I would like to introduce Mara Humphrey, a mother of four, Board of Water Commissioners member, and the chair of the Ramsey Conservation District. Mara. Well, thank you, Steve, and thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. We're really blessed in St. Paul for having high-quality drinking water. But that doesn't just happen. Those efforts start long before the water reaches the drinking water treatment plants here. It starts in our backyards, our lakes, our rivers, and our streams. As a third-generation St. Paul resident and a mother of four children, I want to ensure that we still have clean drinking water that we have today, that it's still around for my children and their children and generations to come. From my work as Ramsey Conservation District Supervisor, I know firsthand how soil erosion, pollution, and other factors can affect the quality of water in our streams, rivers, and lakes. We need to work to ensure that the water we will eventually drink is protected and that rules are in place to protect our water sources. Rivers and lakes belong to all of us. They're all of our collective responsibility to ensure the quality of surface water remains high. The higher the quality of source waters that we receive at the treatment plant, the higher the quality of the drinking water that can be produced. As a member of the Board of Water Commissioners, I know that providing reliable, quality drinking water is a public trust that the water utility in St. Paul takes very seriously, and I'm very proud of that. The water utility staff works very hard around the clock, 24 hours a day, to ensure that the water we drink is safe and reliable. Every day, we're able to turn on our water faucets and get clean, reliable drinking water, which is something that can't be taken for granted. Our lives and our livelihoods depend on the reliable delivery of clean drinking water. That starts with us. In our use of water, our treatment of our waters and lakes, and our efforts to keep our waterways clean for our children, their children, and the generations of children to come. So I want to thank everyone for being here to highlight and discuss the importance of clean water and clean water sources. I'd like to introduce and hand it over to Mayor Chris Coleman. Mayor Coleman has been the mayor of the great city of St. Paul since 2006. Prior to that, he served several years as a city council member. Under his leadership, I'm very proud that St. Paul has become a national leader in green initiatives and sustainable living. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Chris Coleman. 
Well, thank you so much. I, I'm so glad to have uh, Administrator McCarthy here today. This is uh, the second time that we've been able to host her. Uh, she was here uh, shortly ago to look at the Science Museum and some of the heat recapture uh, work that they were doing at the Science Museum, really demonstrating uh, some of the best of sustainable practices. And so uh, we like to brag about what we can teach the rest of the nation and here in Minnesota. We are people, as you know, that walk on water. Literally <laughs> five months a year. Uh, and, and, and so we, we take our water very seriously. Water defines uh, Minnesota the way that mountains define Colorado or the ocean defines California. Uh, and the clean, clean quality of water that we have uh, too often taken for granted, uh, our fighting to sustain uh, is very important to our way of life and who we, how we identify ourselves in the land of sky blue waters. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, Council Member Chris Tolbert, who's uh, a member of the St. Paul Water Board, uh, and Commissioner Ed Eltinger, who is the, uh, the head of the Department of Health in the state of Minnesota. We're glad to have them here with us as well. Uh, but we really are here to, uh, to have an opportunity for Administrator McCarthy to take a look at how we do things here. Uh, as Mara said, the, uh, the importance of the quality of water uh, as an intake source, it really dictates how, how the quality of the water that you have uh, when you turn on that tap. And we are very, very proud that the quality of the water that we have in the city of St. Paul continues to improve. But part of that is because the quality of the Mississippi River, as people are more aware of how to protect the quality of that water that we draw from, improves. And so we need to continue to work with our partners at the state level, at the federal government level, to do everything that we can to maintain the quality of our waters across this country. It is no, uh, it is no news to anyone that there are many regions of this country uh, for, for whom uh, just it's simply they can't take water for granted. If you go down to Texas, as, as we were talking about just a little bit ago, if you look at the before and after images in California uh, between water levels in lakes a couple of years ago versus what they are today, lakes and reservoirs, uh, and in their rivers, if you look at the, the threat to the Colorado River across this country, uh, the St. Louis River was in northern Minnesota was just named as one of the endangered waterways in this country. Uh, we continue to, uh, to have challenges, and we have to be diligent, and we have to continue to fight uh, on behalf of all those that depend, whether it's the 400,000 plus customers that we serve through the St. Paul Water Service or whether it's uh, the, the millions of residents across the uh, state of Minnesota. So we're doing our part. One of the things that we like to brag about, uh, Ann Hunt, my uh, Environmental Sustainability Coordinator, uh, I think her proudest, we're about to open a new ballpark in downtown St. Paul. We're going to take rain uh, uh, water from the nearby maintenance facility for the light rail line and we're going to use that water to not only irrigate the field but also to flush toilets in that stadium and we're going to have one of the greenest and most uh, water uh, efficient facilities in the entire country. Uh, it, is, it is not because of any one person, it is because a team of people that understand how important these issues are and how we have to leave a better Minnesota and a better St. Paul for future generations. Whether it's more Mars for four kids, uh, I don't have grandchildren yet, but it's only a matter of time. Uh, I, 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 I am concerned uh, for future generations of Minnesotans. And I know that in Administrator McCarthy, we have an incredible partner who gets not only the work that we do, but how we will lead the way in conservation and in environmental sustainability policies. And so it's my great pleasure to welcome back once again to St. Paul, the technically Maplewood, uh, Administrator McCarthy. <laughs> First of all, I want to tell you how much I love being back in Minnesota. Um, it is a great place to be, and I think the mayor said it very well, and I was speaking with the governor this morning about the culture of this state, about the value that they see in this, the state's natural resources, and the work they're doing that really reflect the value of, uh, of the resources to all their communities. We are uh, sitting at, at a spot where we are celebrating, or at least I am and want everybody to, the great work that these mayors are doing to translate the value that people in this state have for their water resources into actions that will protect them. And today is really all about partnership, not just the partnership that we're celebrating with this uh, drinking water treatment facility that has always been out in front and recognized as a leader, but to celebrate the work that the mayors are doing. And it goes well beyond the green roofs that they have been putting out there. Um, it is a, a partnership that recognizes that our efforts working together to protect uh, clean water 
um, to move forward with, with uh, EPA's rule that helps define what waters are so important to protect is really a, a recognition that we are all in this together that this is Public Health Week. We are talking about the public health of our families, our communities, and the economic vitality of our states. That is what is at stake when we are talking about working together to protect these tremendous resources. Folks in this state understand that it's not just about public health, but it is about providing our factories with the kind of water that they need to produce uh, the products that we rely on. It's about protecting the pristine places to hunt and fish and swim. And it's also about agriculture and how we work together to make sure that we enjoy the, the products that are developed on our farms and our ranches. And we provide them and work with them to keep our water clean. You know, one out of three people in America rely on drinking water sources, these small rivers and streams that today lack clear protection. That's what EPA's job is, is to ensure that those vital resources are protected so that when you are trying to clean up your drinking water, that we have an ability to ensure that you have good source water protection to make your jobs easier and to produce water that, that is, is cost effective to sell to your consumers. And if we work together, we can get this job done, which is why our clean water rule is moving forward and we're going to enjoy its release and work together with all of our stakeholders to make sure that they understand understand and embrace the challenge together. Uh, it is remarkable to me that so many people in this state actually rely on these small rivers and streams. And I'm happy to know that the Mississippi is getting cleaner, but I'll bet there'll never be a day when this drinking water treatment facility isn't necessary. And we know that the continued investment in these resources is a job that we all have to do together. The great news is that the president has actually proposed a significant budget for our state uh, revolving fund so that we can continue the partnership with the states and local communities and we've actually begun to shift a little bit more resources towards the drinking water supply side, knowing that we're faced with, with considerable challenges moving forward. And we've also opened up new opportunities to attract public-private partnerships because we know it's going to take investment in this infrastructure beyond what the public sector can provide, that we recognize that clean water is a foundation of our economy. And in Ramsey County, over 400,000 people, that's 80% of their residents, gets water from these, these uh, intermittent streams, the streams that people don't realize how important they are. And we need to keep working together to get there. Uh, I will just uh, end by, by uh, recognizing a couple of things, not only the leadership of the governor and his team, but also the tremendous work of, of Mayor Coleman. And I know that, that uh, Mayor Hodges couldn't be w here with us today, that she's not feeling well. But these two cities rock. I know they are the twin cities, but they are the best twin cities ever anywhere. You know, I spent time at the Science Museum, as you mentioned, but it went beyond uh, sort of pointing out the great new technology features that are allowing that facility to be efficient and save money. But they were sitting down with our kids, teaching the next generation lessons that, that it's taken us a while to learn. You know, in lessons that involve new technologies and innovation. So instead of feeling like we, we have challenges that we can't tackle, like our drinking water challenges, like our wastewater challenges, like climate change, we can turn these challenges into huge opportunities if we teach our kids not to dwell on the problems but to focus on the solutions. Today we have these solutions. We can move them forward. And I, and I can't tell you how much fun it was to spend time with Mayor Coleman because because every time we walked down a block, he was able to talk to me about the district heating that they were doing, about the new park that they had just invested in. It was like he was showing me his kids. You know, <laughs> these are his grandchildren, I think, uh, until he gets one of, of his, ones of his own. And Mayor Hodges, uh, not to one-up you, Mayor, this is not a one-up issue, but <laughs> Mayor Hodges just celebrated uh, being, not, um, being uh, given the presentation as a clean action champion for her, for her city of Minneapolis. 
And, and that is an honor that, that the White House only bestowed on a little over a dozen communities. And, it, and she is doing such a tremendous uh, job actually challenging her citizens through social media to, to actually take some of the work and some of the understanding and some of their commitment and turn it into actions that every individual can do. Because what, the, what the, this mayor is doing and what Major, Mayor Hodges is doing is showing that the solutions are there and everybody can participate. That if we roll up our sleeves like we did in the 60s and we apply that same, that same energy, we can do it and face the challenges that we're facing today. She's, she's, comp she's actually pushing them to look at recycling again. Now, would you think we still needed how many years, 60 years later, to be talking about recycling? But she's reminding people of how important it is. She's, she's pushing them to look at composting. My favorite for her monthly uh, challenges is dinner with a side of compost. <laughs> is that a delicious menu or what? That's because what she's saying is if restaurants compost, they have a commitment to the environment that should be celebrated, go spend your money there. Spend it at good places that really care, not just about doing their own work, but doing the work that all of us must share, which is to roll up our sleeves, remember how the environment is not just something we need to protect public health, this week of public health, but also that it's a fundamental of a continued growing economy. And it is what makes the United States the United States we want to live in. Thank you for all of your tremendous commitment. It is wonderful to be here, and I celebrate your successes.